Okay, so welcome back everyone. Let's dive right into the contents of the DB2 lecture series. Welcome back. Um, so let's, let's get right down to it and start our exploration of the internals of relational database systems. This is chapter two, unary table storage, and it will be the first chapter where we send a pro query inside a database system to explore the internals and how the system will react uh, according to the query they've sent. Okay, so let's start away with query Q1, our first SQL pro query that we will send inside PostgreSQL in this case. Uh, it's a probe query, so we will send it inside the system and will let the system explain to us what goes on inside while the query is being executed. All these, uh, all these probe queries I have put in these specially marked stripe boxes so that you can tell them easily from, from other queries that we will send in, or that we will author in this, in this lecture series. So, this is the first probe query. It's super simple. It doesn't get much. It doesn't get much simpler than that. We will query a table. We will create the table in a minute. It's called unary. It's a single column table, only one k ta uh, one column in this table, and we will retrieve all the rows, all the rows from the table. No where predicate, no filters here, and we will display all the columns of all the rows u that we have uh, that we have uh, extracted. As I told you, this will be a single column table, so u dot star will access one single column. It will be column A in this set, in this uh, case. What we will see is that this command retrieves the or all the rows in table unary in some arbitrary order. There is no well defined no defined order on the rows in unary. In particular, it's not the insertion order or something. We will come to that. So retrieve all the rows in some arbitrary order, display all the columns. That's the most simple pro query that we are going to send and it's still interesting. So in the sequel, when we discuss the two database systems I was referring to in the introduction, namely PostgreSQL and MoneyDB, these two guys, um, then in some parts, or actually in almost all the parts, the discussion will differ. It will diverge whether we are talking about PostgreSQL or we are talking about MoneyDB. So to make things clear, uh, I will use these batches. I will use these two batches on my slides whenever we enter a, a, a region of a discussion where, we, where it gets system specific. So for the next few slides, you will see the PostgreSQL batch in the top right corner in the top right corner of the of the slides. Also, what you will notice is the syntax of the pro query that we are sending. Uh, they, these, this, query, this syntax will um, differ whether we are talking to PostgreSQL or we are talking to MoneyDB. That's a fact, a cruel, a sad fact of SQL real world life. The dialects, the SQL dialects spoken by these systems differ slightly from each other. That's something we have to deal with. It's not that super uh, tough in the in the context of this of this course, and I will point you to the syntactic differences whenever they are relevant. Okay, so we have to cope with that. Tough luck. So before we can send this particular pro query, we of course have to get hold of such a table unary, and uh, a, a brief aside here on how uh, on, on one method to easily come up with some sample tables that we can use in pro queries and to explain the internals of the system. So a very quick way to generate a table with some well-controlled contents is a so-called table function that is provided by PostgreSQL as well as MoneyDB called generate series. Generate series emits a series, a sequence of values. In this case, it will be the value starting from one going up to 100 using a step sequence of one. So generate series will bind this row variable i to the values one, two, three, four in succession up to 100. We can use these 100 bindings for i to generate rows 
for example, this single column, this single column row that only contains the value i in this place, in this case, and then insert that into our table unary. Unary is a, is a table that is has a single column a. As you can see, just above here we have we have uh, we have created this particular table, single column a of type integer that fits well with the values generated here by generate series. In general, generate series is this table function as it's called, start from s, count up to e, use step width, step values delta in this particular case. Uh, it doesn't have to be integers here. It doesn't have to be the ones and the one hundreds and the step width uh, one, which is a default, by the way. We could also, for example, generate successive timestamps. So let's see how that would work. I've brought my editor here, as you can see. And I've prepared one of these generate series statements that I could set to PostgreSQL here. And in this case, I will use a start value of now it's a timestamp. This is the value of type timestamp representing the current time. Okay. I will count up to from now to up to one hour. Okay. So that's the start and ending values. And my delta, my step width will be one minute. All right. So let's try to send that to PostgreSQL to see what kind what series of values is being generated so uh, this is the query i will send now whenever i send queries from the editor to the system i can do that directly from here uh, just so you know i am marking the queries that i will send next in my editor and then send it for execution and in the lower half of the editor, you can see the response of the system here so a single column i is, has been generated the one of the values generated here, the first value in a sense, quotes, the first value is the current timestamp. It's now 1146, as you can see on the 20th of April. And we will see more values here, all being spaced apart by exactly one minute, the delta value that we're requesting. And that should be like 60 rows. Let's scroll down here, uh, 60, uh, 61 rows, of course, off by one error. Uh, okay, so that's the 61 minutes that we can fit in such a time frame here and generate series could generate these values for us. Okay, so this is generate series. We will use that to generate the contents of the table unary and that's what we do here. By the way, the file I'm currently using in this editor, it's a SQL file and um, of course you could use these SQL commands to replay these these experiments on your local installation of PostgreSQL. So to make that easier for you, I've prepared files for you for download on the GitHub uh, page. And the current file I'm uh, I'm using, you will see that you will see that over there indicated in the videos. Uh, just so you know, this is the current file that um, that I'm currently using, uh, and you can use the same file to replay the experiments locally on your particular installation. Okay, so let's create the table. Drop it first if it exists and then create the unary table. Okay, done that, that's quick, all right. Uh, and then insert the 100 integer values that we were talking about, all right, so let's do that. Okay, insert 0, 100 indicates, hey, uh, uh, zero rows have been rejected, 100 rows have actually been inserted uh, into the table, that's nice, perfect. Okay, got these. And then let's check whether the contents of the table is exactly what we expected, 100 rows of these integers. So let's send the probe query. Uh, let's send the probe query, retrieve all the rows from unary table, select all the columns. Let's do that. All right. There you go. Very simple query, very simple response. Unary table with column A of 100 values. Okay, 100 values. That's a very simple query. Actually, in SQL, there's an even, in, in some SQL dialects, there's an even uh, a simpler way to formulate this particular query. I could just write table, table unary here. Retrieve all the rows from table unary, reproduce all the columns that should just give the same result. There's the same result. Okay, all right. Okay. So now let's try uh, how Postgres internally deals with this particular query. Uh, let's try 
to look behind the curtain. And uh, how we will do that is using the explain keyword in SQL. The explain keyword is the DBMS X-ray, as I called it. Uh, it it uh, instructs the system to not actually execute the query, uh, but to reveal its internal planning of how would you evaluate this particular query. And it's actually very simple to do. So to invoke that that uh, that that X-ray, we just we just use the very same probe query here. So let me circle that. That's the 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 query probe query Q1 that we were talking about, and I just prefix it with this explain command. Actually, with an explain verbis command. So please be very verbose, PostgreSQL, about the your planning about how to evaluate this particular probe query Q1. All right, so if we do that, this is what we get. This is the plan. This is the plan of PostgreSQL. And we will see it's a very simple plan because query Q1 is very simple. Um, this is the output. Uh, so the urinary table, it's internally it's called public urinary, is actually being accessed. All right, that's no surprise. And the way it is accessed is using a so-called sequential scan. Sequential scan, all right, here's a sequential scan. Okay, this is the operation performed on the, on the table urinary. The output is just a single column and we've seen that in the editor, oh, it's just the column A. Other cool information is being dumped here and we will talk about this in the course of the lecture, but this is the plan. This is the plan that PostgreSQL uses to evaluate this particular query. All right. So generally, how would you use explain? You would just formulate your query queue just as you are used to, and then you would prefix it with the explain keyword with some optional options that you could supply to explain. Uh, one of the options we've already seen is verbis. Be really verbis, be, uh, use a high level of detail. That's something that we will normally use. But uh, you could also use these round parentheses to supply many options supply many more options and send them to uh, uh, to the explain command. For example, to change the output format, we will always, almost always use the default format text here. We could also use this particular option analyze here. And analyze says, hey, please show me the plan, show me the planning that you have prepared for the query queue, but also evaluate the query once you've shown me the plan, and then enrich the plan output by measurements that you've taken while you were executing the query. Normally, explain would not evaluate the query. Explain analyze also evaluates the query and annotates the plan output with measurements like, hey, I've taken that many milliseconds to, to evaluate this particular piece of the plan, or I have shuffled that many bytes from disk into main memory to evaluate this particular piece of the plan. This is something that can be very useful, and when time comes, we will of course use that. So let's switch back to the editor. There we go. So here's the explain verbis. So we could use just the plain explain verbis and uh, evaluate this particular query. Let's do that. Okay. So we see the plan that we've already seen on the on the slides is sequential scan performed on our public unary table uh, outputting a single column A. All right. If we do an explain verbis analyze, two options in round parentheses here. Okay, let's do that. Uh, then a bit more detail is being output. For example, we can see that the query itself will run in 0 0.7 milliseconds. Planning even took longer, uh, 1.0 eight one milliseconds. So very simple queries have uh, have quite some substantial planning time, it appears. Uh, we can also see, let's scroll over here, that um, we've, act we've uh, retrieved 100 rows. Uh, the sequential scan is obviously has been evaluated a single time only. We will come back to all these fields in uh, when um, when time comes in the in the uh, in the uh, in the in the course. And 
this is the actual time frame in which the sequential scan has been performed. We will come back to that, but uh, some nice, some nice information that we've collected now that the query has been planned and been executed. That's the effect of explain analyze. Okay, so uh, sequential scan, what does it do? Actually, the sequential scan visits the entire table contents and the table contents are held by PostgreSQL in a so-called heap file. A heap file is where the contents of the all of the rows, the 100 rows of table unary in this particular uh, case, are residing. And the sequential scan will scan all the rows, all the contents of the heap file in some arbitrary order, which fits the relational data model because there is no defined row order on, uh, on, on tables. The sequential scan is free to visit the heap file in any way it sees fit, from front to back, from back to front. We will see that both options are actually being used and reproduce all the rows in the file in some particular order. All right. In particular, this is not the insertion order, not the insertion order in which we have uh, uh, placed the values inside, uh, inside uh, the table. Okay. Such heap files are actually files in the sense that uh, we understand them in an operating system uh, file. And we will come to the details of these files in, uh, in due course. Okay. Uh, such a heap file is a very, very simple structure. It's really a plain raw container with no interesting structure in a sense. Uh, we can very easily grow and shrink such a container in, in that we just simply append rows to such a container or just remove things from the middle of this particular container. No raw order, something is being maintained everything is very simple. This is a very simple and very efficient data structure, actually. It doesn't give us much support, actually. It doesn't, it only gives us the possibility to sequentially scan the entire file because there's no interesting order. We can reproduce the entire file contents and that's about it. In particular, there's no support uh, no particular support for finding rows by a particular column value. Okay, show me all the rows in which the L value is a value is greater than 50. No such support from the heap file because the rows are scattered across the heap file in an arbitrary order anyway. The sequential scan can reproduce the entire heap file, the entire table contents, and has no particular support to pick particular rows out of the uh, of the file. In fact, um, the, the uh, uh, database system is free to reorganize, is free to reorganize the, the particular heap file at any point in time. And this may, of course, have an impact on the order of how the table presents its, its contents to us. So, for example, at this particular point in time, our disk that carries the heap file may look like this. Uh, this could be the contents of the heap file. This dark gray block is in the beginning. This is the middle part, the lighter gray part, and this lighter gray block is at the end of the heap file. And if we scan this heap file at one particular point in time, for example, using a select star from unary query, this might be the row order that we are observing. Uh, the one is in the beginning, air quotes, followed by two leading up to 100, the L value 100 here in this particular file. But a second later, a millisecond later, maybe because the system has compacted or vacuumed the heap file, we will come to that also, the order of information in that heap file might have changed. Now the gray block, the light gray block is in the beginning, the dark gray block is in the, in the, in the tail of the file, and selecting all the rows from table unary now might show a different, might show a different uh, picture now. So the 99 and 100, they might be found in the beginning of this table dump now, of the output of the select star from unary query, and the one and the two, 
formerly at the beginning of the table are now at the end of the table and still this is a valid a valid answer for this particular a valid output for this particular procury q1 because there is no guaranteed order of rows in such a in such a relational table and well the system has made use of that has freely rearranged the heap file probably for good measure and will now reproduce the rows in some arbitrary order. That's fine for a heap file. All right, so much for now. So uh, we will, of course, uh, dive into the details of uh, how these heap files are in organized internally in due course, uh, namely in the upcoming videos. And I'm looking forward to show you the interesting stuff that happens behind the scenes in PostgreSQL and in the heap files. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.